Finding something that was left behind by our ancient ancestors is just the beginning of the story as far as archaeologists are concerned. Once a discovery has been made, it has to be explained. Who made it? Where did it come from? What was it used for? All of these questions have to be considered, and sometimes the answers can't be found. All the discoveries you're about to see in this video come with questions that are yet to be answered. World War II wasn't a great time to be living in the German city of Lübeck. Allied bomber planes visited the region almost every night, and the bombs they dropped wreaked havoc on the buildings and people below. Somehow, those same bombs also managed to create this so-called mummy cake. The cake hasn't really been mummified, of course, but it has been carbonized. The process would never have happened if it weren't for a bomb that landed on a cake shop in 1942. The bomb caused a firestorm and destroyed the shop, but the hazelnut cake survived because it was in the cellar of the building at the time. The fire was so intense that the building collapsed, but in doing so, it formed a cavity around the cake, which prevented the flames from reaching it and stopped it from being crushed. Instead, it effectively cooked the cake until it was black, preserving it so well that we can still see its swirls and frosting. Documents found beneath the cake say it was to be delivered to a confirmation ceremony the Sunday after the bombing happened. Sadly, we suspect the ceremony never happened. Next up, we have a remarkable find from Scandinavia. It's a wooden lion's head, and it was recovered from a Finnish shipwreck in September 2021. It might not be looking its best, but that's because it spent the past couple of centuries 200 feet below the water in the Gulf of Finland. Bringing it back to the surface was a controversial move by archaeologists, as Finnish tradition dictates that shipwrecks are to be left alone. When the wreck was first discovered close to the coast of Kirkanumi in 2005, the carved head was attached to a beam on the side of the ship's bow. When explorers returned to the wreck in 2021, they found that the head had fallen off and was lying on the seabed. They feared it would rot away to nothingness on the hard seabed, so they brought it back to the shore with them. Having done that, they hoped to analyze the head with a view to determining the place the ship came from and perhaps even its identity. It appears to be an 18th century vessel, so there ought to be a record of its loss somewhere. Most people who use golf courses generally don't like to find themselves in a pond because it means a shot has gone badly astray. Based on this discovery, though, perhaps there will be archaeologists in those ponds in the future to help players to retrieve their balls. We say that because of the September 2021 discovery of a 4,000-year-old Bronze Age coffin at the bottom of a pond at the Tetney Golf Club in Lincolnshire, England. The casket is carved from a single log oak, and when it was opened, it was found to contain a rare type of warrior's axe. The presence of the axe suggests that this was a warrior who enjoyed high social status, perhaps because of his achievements on the battlefield. The weapon is ceremonial rather than practical, and was most likely bestowed upon the warrior as a gift. Only 12 axes like it have ever been found in Bronze Age burials in the country before, all of which were in high-status graves. Another sign of his status is the fact that his coffin was lined with juniper branches and yew leaves, which were there to cushion his body and presumably make him more comfortable in the afterlife. Must Farm Quarry in Whittlesey, close to Peterborough in England, is one of the richest archaeological sites in Europe. It's even been described as the British equivalent of Pompeii. Countless archaeological artifacts have been found there over the years, but one of the most remarkable is a Bronze Age wheel that was recovered from the site in 2016. Scientists have been able to date the wheel to between 3,100 and 2,800 years ago. It's three feet in diameter and has been preserved so well by the silt and mud at the bottom of the quarry that it still contains part of its axle. This is the most complete example of a Bronze Age wheel ever to be discovered in Britain. Other discoveries made at the same time as the wheel included small bowls and jars, along with a wooden platter, all of which contained traces of barley, wheat, pork, and beef that the ancient inhabitants of the land lived off. The presence of the wheel is a strong indication that the people who lived here 3,000 years ago 
had contact with other communities who lived on drier land and may have traveled to trade with them. If you're trying to give a ballroom, a restaurant, or even a room inside your home an opulent feel, you'll need a chandelier to achieve the effect. That's as true in the modern era as it seems to have been 2,000 years ago when this Roman chandelier hung inside a grand villa in Spain's Elda Valley. The priceless artifact was discovered in August 2021 and is said by archaeologists to be the only complete Roman chandelier ever found. Obviously, it wouldn't have held light bulbs, but the spaces around its perimeter would have been filled with candles or perhaps oil lamps. After putting the shattered pieces of the chandelier back together, experts noticed that the name Lucius Eros was engraved into its side. The same name has been noted on several other artifacts that have come from the villa. Nobody can be sure whether Lucius was the person who owned the villa or whether he was the person who made the objects. If it's the latter, then this is one of the earliest examples of product branding we've ever seen. We now move on to the colorful and vibrant history of ancient Mexico. In 2003, archaeologists found a secret tunnel beneath the famous Temple of the Feathered Serpent in Teotihuacan. It's very difficult to access the tunnel, so most of the exploration work has been performed by robots mounted with cameras. Because of that, the process has been very slow. In 2021, archaeologists were amazed to discover bouquets of flowers inside the tunnel. Despite being approximately 2,000 years old, the bouquets are so well preserved that the cotton ropes that tie the stems together are still in place. The symbolism of the flowers is unknown, but experts think it has something to do with the beliefs that these mysterious ancient people had about the afterlife. The tunnel has pyrite in its ceiling to symbolize the stars and mercury on the floor to represent the earth and all its water. The flowers might, therefore, have been representative of flora. Why anyone would go to so much trouble to do all of this in a narrow space and then deliberately fill it with soil and rocks is a mystery. The peat bogs of rural Ireland keep their secrets. Anything that falls into them is likely to stay there for thousands of years, whether that's an animal, an object, or even a human being. There have been several peat bog bodies recovered from Irish bogs in the past, but this isn't one of them. Instead, it's a large and mysterious wooden idol that was found in Gortnacrana, Roscommon, in August 2021. The idol is eight feet tall and vaguely human-shaped, although not so much you'd say it was a representation of a living human. Finding wooden idols in bogs isn't totally unheard of in Ireland, but never before has one of such size been discovered. Scientists have been able to take samples of the idol for testing, and from those tests, they can tell us that this is a relic of the Ice Age. They think it's about 1,600 years old. When the idol was pulled from the bog, it dragged a collection of weaponry, animal bones, human remains, and golden jewelry and ornaments along with it. Archaeologists think that all of these things were thrown into the bog together, which would make this a votive offering of some kind. The symbolic meaning of the idol remains unknown. In many ways, the point of archaeology is to bring the past to life. Here's a facility in Pompeii that makes that process literal. It's an ancient fast food counter called a Thermopylium, and in December 2020, it reopened to the public for the first time since the day Mount Vesuvius erupted and buried the city in the year 79. The Thermopylium, complete with its beautiful frescoes, can be thought of as the ancient Roman equivalent of a fast food restaurant. The vendor who owned or worked in it would cook food at home and then bring it here to be reheated and sold to order, often accompanied by red wine. If we accept that the paintings on the exterior walls of the structure reflect the items on the menu, then we can say that the Thermopolium sold mostly chicken and duck. Some sealed jars were found inside the Thermopolium when it was discovered in 2019. Though, an analysis of the contents revealed traces of snails, fish, pork, and beef. Whoever owned this stall must have believed in the idea of having something for everyone. The modern day won't be quite so eclectic and will also have to adhere to modern health and safety standards, but it's as close to eating an old Pompeii as anyone's ever going to get. 
Recovering artifacts from the sunken city of Thonis Heraklion is a slow process and is likely to take several decades to complete. The once mighty Egyptian Greek port city sank after an earthquake during the 8th century. By the time that happened, this wicker fruit basket was already ancient. It was found inside a tumulus discovered by the European Institute for Underwater Archaeology in July 2021 and still contains the fruit that was wrapped inside it when it was placed in the tumulus. Amazingly, that act of placement happened 2,400 years ago. Scientists haven't yet opened the baskets and may never do so, but they've still been able to detect the presence of dome fruit and grape seeds inside them. Experts believe that the excellent state of preservation of everything inside the tumulus may not have been an accident. The tumulus is beneath several layers of burned material, so it's likely that the burial site was used only once before being sealed in an elaborate ceremonial act that involved a lot of fire. We can probably never hope to understand the nature of that ceremony, but at least it kept these artifacts safe for us to find. If land is transferred from one person to another today, a digital record of the transfer is made with hard copies available on request. Things were a little more set in stone in ancient times. And we mean set in stone quite literally. This is the Kuduru of Melishihu. The inscriptions and carvings on its surface are beautiful, but they also serve a practical purpose. They contain records of gifts and the bestowing of land to people by the various Kassite dynasty kings of ancient Babylon. The fact that it's Kassite helps us to date the stone artifact, which is approximately 3,200 years old. The most surprising of all the transactions it details is the transfer of four regions of cultivated land and all the settlements built upon them from King Melisipak II to a man named Marduk Apla Idina, who's described as the king's servant. Historians can't agree on what's meant by this. It would be highly irregular for a king to give whole towns or villages to a servant, so Marduk Apla Idina could be the king's son, his nephew, or even his lover. You might have heard the phrase, hit the mother load at some point in the past. It isn't a phrase that's often uttered by archaeologists, but it was used in the context of this June 2021 discovery in a Turkish olive grove. There, three miles outside the town of Iznik, archaeologists have found an incredible collection of beautifully decorated imperial Roman era sarcophagi. It's looking increasingly likely that the entire area may once have been a necropolis. The first of the discoveries, a seven-ton solid marble sarcophagus, has already been taken from the site and given pride of place in the Garden of Iznik Museum. The carvings on its side depict a scene from the Iliad, in which Agamemnon takes Briseis from Achilles, who had enslaved her after he murdered her family. Historians have noted that scenes involving Achilles were often chosen for reliefs on the sarcophagi of the era, but they're not sure why. It's not as though he's depicted as a particularly pleasant person. If the discoveries keep coming at their current rate, the whole area is likely to be turned into an open-air museum. Archaeologists in Finland got very excited about the discovery of this snake staff in June 2021. Although looking at the artifact's size, it might be more accurate to call it a snake stick. The reason for their excitement is that the stick is thought to have belonged to a Neolithic-era shaman some 4,000 years ago and is a dead ringer for the snake staffs that often appear in the region's Neolithic-era rock art. The staff was found preserved within a layer of peat close to the town of Yarvinsuo. There's a prehistoric settlement here in the wetland where people arrived 6,000 years ago and stayed for around 2,000 years. Depictions of people from this era carrying snake staffs can be found on rocks not only elsewhere in Finland, but also in parts of Russia. This is the first time that a real staff of this kind has ever been found. It's likely that its owner used it in magical rituals of some kind, but the nature and purpose of those rituals are things that we'll probably never understand. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!